محاسن تهدي المادحين لوصفها You can't ignore the incredible vision and dedication to the work at OpenAI. From the very first day I saw them, they were dedicated to wanting to do this. And they've been focused on it for five years. And uh, of course, in, in research even longer than that, I'm incredibly proud of the work that they've done. Yeah, really terrific team. Well, we're the world's engine for AI. Because of the decisions we made a decade or so ago, and we put so much of our might and expertise into it, We're now in every cloud, we're in every country, in every field of science. 35,000 companies use our AI computers to develop and advance this field. Giant companies like cloud and internet companies all the way to startups, thousands of startups democratized. We took what otherwise would be a billion dollar data center running CPUs, and we shrunk it down into a data center of 100 million. The thing that's really amazing about artificial intelligence is that what, is, what ChatGPT has shown is that it has eliminated the digital and the technology divide. Everyone is a programmer now. Everybody could program. People would probably be surprised that uh, the most powerful and energy efficient supercomputers in the world that are used for molecular dynamic simulations to climate science research to material science research to quantum computing research are powered by NVIDIA. All the way to the other extreme, a whole bunch of robots that are powered by NVIDIA in manufacturing lines, uh, self-driving cars that are powered by NVIDIA, to the Nintendo Switch that I'm very proud of that's powered by NVIDIA. So we're, we're in very powerful systems and we're in very energy efficient systems and probably one of the most uh, talked about systems today are the systems at the Microsoft Azure data centers that are powering ChatGPT and uh, the work that we did with OpenAI uh, in the very beginning uh, to now uh, that powers ChatGPT. And I think those are really quite exciting. And, uh, which then became this thing called an AI supercomputer and. And I, I remember delivering my very first AI supercomputer. I hand-delivered it myself. I delivered it to OpenAI. The world's very first AI supercomputer was to delivered to OpenAI. What year was that? Well, I guess it's like uh, five, six years ago, I guess, five years ago. Well, you know, every company makes mistakes, and I make a lot of them. And, you know, some of them puts the company in peril, especially in the beginning. Because we were small and, and we're up against very, very large companies and we're trying to invent this brand new technology. And, you know, when you invent something new, uh, you have to convince customers to use it. You have to convince the ecosystem is the right thing to use. And you've got developers, you know, we're a computing company, so developers matter a lot to us. And so we're trying to invent something new and we're, we're barely, we barely know exactly what we're doing. You know, so when you're doing something that's never been done before, you're not exactly sure what you're doing. And yet, on the other hand, you have these giant companies who would like you not to disrupt the industry. And so, so early on, there, you know, there are product mistakes that we made. Uh, there were um, uh, you know, execution challenges that we had. There were some strategy mistakes that I made. And uh, you know, there, there's just so many of them. And you know, one of the skills of resilience is the ability to forget the past. You know, they, just as coaches tell you, don't worry about the last down, worry about the next down. And so, so I try to make sure that the company remembers our learnings from the mistakes. Wow, that's an easy question. Well, we are a technology company that uh, processes software for applications and domains of science that are barely possible without us. And so because of what we do, we can make what is barely possible possible or we can make something that is very energy consuming, very energy efficient, or we could turn something that costs a lot of money and make it much more affordable. And so we created this thing called accelerated computing. And that was what we pioneered about three decades ago. And it's taken until now to really take off. Well, our ambition was always to be a computing platform company. 
we selected computer graphics and video games as our first market combination, technology market, product technology and market combination. Um, but we, we always believed that, that um, accelerated computing was going to be impactful for many, many different industries. We uh, uh, expanded from, from video games into design, and today just about every product that's designed or every digital asset or movie or you know, almost anything that's designed in 2D or 3D digitally uh, uses NVIDIA somehow. And then we extended that into uh, scientific computing, into physical simulation, and started with seismic processing as a, a field called inverse physics, to um, uh, particle simulations, molecular dynamic simulations, and, and so on and so forth, and fluids, and you know, just about every field of science we're in today. And so I'm really proud of that. And, and that led us to uh, a much more general purpose uh, type of accelerated computing that we created which then one day uh, artificial intelligence found us. Uh, every now and then a technology revolution comes along. We were started in the PC revolution. Uh, after that, the internet revolution came and all of a sudden the companies before it, some of them didn't make it to the, to the revolution and some of them, some great, great new companies like Google and others got invented during that time. And then uh, the cloud computing revolution came and then the mobile cloud computing revolution came, and now we're talking about the AI revolution. And so each one of these transitions, it's very unlikely that the companies that were great before it are still great after it. And um, uh, there are some companies that have made uh, the ability to, uh, because of their adaptability and agility, uh, reinvented themselves along the way. Uh, we had to reinvent ourselves you know, in each one of those technology revolutions and, um, uh, you, you know, agility is just really, really, really important to, to our companies. And one of the things that I'm really proud about our company is at the core of our company is incredible technology. We have incredible technologists. You know, if you're pioneering one of the most important computing platforms in the world from use for scientific computing to genomics to digital biology all the way to video games, well, you're going to need incredible computer scientists. So on the one hand, uh, we're incredibly technology rich. On the other hand, we're in enormous, you know, we're in a giant sea of technology companies. And so the ability for us to adapt and uh, reinvent ourselves and continue to be relevant in, from one generation to another generation was really important, and I'm very proud of that. Well, at the time, if you go back 30 years, at the time the PC revolution was just starting, the microprocessor was starting to take off, the CPU was starting to take off, and there was quite a bit of debate about what is the future of computing and how should software be run. And there was a large camp, and, and rightfully so, uh, that believed that CPU or general purpose software was the best way to go. And it was the best way to go for a long time. Uh, we felt, however, that there was a class of applications uh, that wouldn't be possible without acceleration. And, uh, or you couldn't make it affordable enough for everybody to enjoy without acceleration. And so we started this accelerator company, this accelerated computing company to solve those problems. In the beginning, there weren't that many applications for it, frankly. And we smartly chose uh, one particular combination that was a home run. It was computer graphics, and we applied it to video games. And that combination turned out to have been a giant industry and now video games is the largest industry in the world and the largest entertainment industry in the world and it drove our technology for three decades you know because uh, making video games more and more realistic uh, making it available to more people took a long time and we're still in that journey and frankly probably early in that journey you know they're now probably you know over a billion gamers in the world but they're eight billion people Someday, everybody's going to be a gamer, and, and so it's, and it's going to be the largest, by far, entertainment industry. And so, so it turned out to have been a fantastic technology driver for our company. And we, step-by-step, uh, step, added more and more things that we could do to today, artificial intelligence. So uh, we made a lot of great decisions. And the great decisions uh, associated with, with the architecture and discipline of the platform and evangelizing it to everybody. And uh, we re reached out to research universities all over the world. And, you know, we just believe that someday something new. 
So there's a, there's a fundamental reason that makes a, com a new computing uh, architecture um, successful. And at some point, the positive feedback system starts to work. You know, you, you, you've reached now a lot of different customers and different applications. We're in every cloud made, made, in, made by every computer company. And then all of a sudden, one day, a new application that wasn't possible before discovers you. You know, first you discover them, and then pretty soon they discover you. And this positive feedback system starts to, to feed on the